You might have heard that Eric Schmidt, Google's former CEO, made some waves during an econ class at Stanford a few days ago. So apparently one of his good friends decided to have him as a guest lecturer where students could ask him questions. And in today's video, I'll break down his key statements and the ideas that really stood out during this 55 minute interview. And don't worry, we will go through the controversial topic where he talks about work from home and how Google is losing because of that. So before we dive into the major topics and my personal thoughts, here is a quick summary so you don't have to go through the whole video if you don't want to. One, Google's AI challenges. Schmidt believes Google is falling behind in AI because it prioritizes work-life balance too much. He essentially said, if your team is only coming in one day a week, how can you compete with OpenAI or Anthropic? In addition to that, he also said he had great admiration for Musk and TSMC. Schmidt holds Elon Musk and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC in high regard because they push their employees super hard. According to him, keeping the pressure on is absolutely a key to success. TSMC even requires physics PhDs to spend the first year working on the factory floor. And he said, can you imagine people who graduated from America as PhDs doing that? In addition, he talks about how he had regrets about NVIDIA's CUDA. Schmidt acknowledges that he made some poor decisions such as underestimating NVIDIA's CUDA. Now CUDA is essentially the cornerstone of NVIDIA's dominance, and he says that it's powering most of the major AI models with no real competition from other chips. Number four, Schmidt was taken aback when Microsoft partnered with OpenAI, initially thinking they were too insignificant to make an impact. Turns out he was wrong. He also criticized Apple, suggesting their approach to AI is much too relaxed. For example, in terms of Siri, they're using a more closed system, worried about security, so it's all internally on your phone. The AI model is not as big. So in my opinion, this is probably more controversial than the work from home idea, but Schmidt made somewhat controversial opinion about TikTok, advising that if you're starting a business, you should just borrow whatever you can, like music. He joked that if you succeed, you can hire top lawyers to handle any of the legal issues that might pop up from coffee. Number six, Schmidt suggested that any of the AI models in the future with OpenAI Stargate project might be a lot more expensive than you would actually think, possibly $300 billion instead of $100 billion. Now, these are absolutely obscene figures, but he's saying that not only is this a money problem, but this is also a resources problem. So he recommended that US either partner with Canada for hydropower and cheap labor or seek front funding from other nations. Number seven, Schmidt views Europe as a lost cause for tech innovation with regulatory hurdles in Brussels stifling opportunities. He sees a glimmer of hope in France, but not much elsewhere. He also believes that US has completely lost their partnerships with China and that they are competing from this point forward, which we kind of already knew, and that India has somewhat become their most crucial ally in all of this. Number eight, Schmidt isn't optimistic about open source AI. He thinks it's too costly for open source projects to manage, and even a French company he's invested in, Miscroll, is shifting towards a more closed source model. Number nine, wealth inequality. Schmidt believes that AI will widen the gap between the rich and the poor. It's a game between really strong nations who have these chips, who have these resources, who have the models, and the people who lack these resources will be left behind. Number 10, don't expect these AI chips to revive manufacturing jobs in America. Factories are now highly automated, and human workers are way too slow and prone to error. Apple's move to produce MacBooks in Texas isn't really about cheap labor, Schmidt says. It's about needing less labor overall. Finally, Schmidt made the comparison between AI to the early days of electricity. While the potential is absolutely massive, it will take time. People are really impatient, and right now it just takes significant organizational innovation before we truly see its benefits. For now, now we're just sort of picking the low-hanging fruit, at least that's what he believes is currently happening. So that's a quick summary of the 55-minute video, and now I'm really going to go into sort of the main points that I think are super important, with the first being AI uncertainty. So he talks about how even for him, he revised his AI outlook every six months, and this is sort of a testament to how quickly this field is changing and its volatility. For example, he did share examples about the whole Microsoft and OpenAI thing that really surprised him. In addition to that, he talked about how six months ago, he was convinced that the gap between the frontier AI models and the rest were getting much, much smaller. So he ended up investing a lot of money in these smaller companies. Now he's not so sure and he feels like the bigger companies are really pulling ahead. In addition, he talks about how AI is essentially a 10X engineer in your pocket. Schmidt describes when he was the early CEO that you could get these 10X programmers on your teams, but they might not actually even listen to you. They would just ignore you and do their own thing. So Schmidt describes the combination of having these large context windows, AI agents that learn and improve themselves, text action capabilities as having an impact to where anybody can have the ability to create something from scratch right away by having this 10X engineer. Well, this might not be true right now because we all know the limitations of ChatGPT as well as other AI models. This does have potential huge impact and he compares it to potentially maybe not necessarily the horrific impact with social media that it had. And in my opinion, it is pretty scary. It could go either way, but I kind of liken it to we have our phones now and everyone is sort of a photographer. And this has brought a lot of positive impact and a lot of negative impact. And it just means that everyone has the opportunity to create whatever they want. I actually think this is also super controversial where he talks about faster copying of ideas and in optimization. Schmidt mentions, again, if you, if you wanted to tell an LLM in the future, make me a copy of TikTok 
steal all of their users, steal all of their music, put my preferences in, produce this program, and reiterate every 30 seconds, release it. And in one hour, if this program is not viral, try to do something else along the same lines. So he's talking about doing faster and faster experimentation with AI models. But basically his whole contention was like, everyone is already copying. And if you do become big lawyers, you can hire the best lawyers, they'll handle it for you. And in my opinion, this does remind me of the idea of that good artists borrow, but great artists steal in a really ethically questionable way. But whether we like it or not, this is already happening. And at the end of the day, it just shows you that the idea is definitely not the most important. Execution will always be key at the end of the day. Number four, enormous amounts of money. So he does talk about how like these AI models will go to 100 billion, 200 billion, 300 billion, and even Sam Altman says it might even go to a trillion. He talks about how it's not just the money problem, but it also a resource problem. I'm not convinced that the AI models will improve as fast as people think. I think there's two issues here. First is when we went from chat GPT-2 to GPT-3 to GPT-4, we went from like 1 million to then 10 million to then 100 million to then 1 billion. And even though the context windows are getting larger, we're not seeing that drastic exponential improvement. But another thing that we need to think about is we're investing so much money, it might actually be cheaper to have human software engineers than using an AI system that costs like over a trillion dollars to keep along with all of the electricity costs and things like that. Okay, and finally, the whole work from home controversy, which everyone has been talking about and one of the main reasons why the whole live stream got taken down, even though funny enough, a uh, bunch of people recorded it. Anything that gets posted on the internet lives forever and you can access this video by just searching it up. But Schmidt stirred quite a bit of controversy in terms of his comments about work from home. Basically his main concern was that there was a huge loss of network effects. People don't work nearly as hard when they live so far away from work. While I do understand his point about how network effects can be really valuable when you work within the workplace. And you also have to think about the context. He's talking to these Stanford young students and he's talking about the value of being able to work hard and comparing it to other countries and how hard they work. But to me, it does still feel very out of touch with the realities that people face today. For one, housing is not as affordable and if you wanna buy a house, it's gonna be really far away. So again, it's not as efficient to drive from your home to work. Previously, this whole car industry shaped our cities where we have to like drive from like place to place. We drive our kids to school, it takes 30 minutes. We drive to work, it takes 30 minutes and you just have to use your car for everywhere. And if we isolate this problem to just sort of the network effects that we're experiencing, I feel like it's more of a systemic problem that makes remote work more appealing, but also more challenging when we try to maintain the team dynamics that Schmidt is trying to value. In terms of hardworking, especially a billionaire, it just sounds insensitive when you want your employees to work as hard as possible. When again, most of the value is coming to the main founders as well as the people who were the main risk takers at the beginnings. So I feel like the amount of hard work to reward is just not equitable here. And that's why people feel like it's very out of touch. Him coming from this billionaire's perspective, it's clear that the landscape of AI and technology is changing rapidly. And the way we approach work, innovation and competition will also need to adapt accordingly.